Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Thanks for commenting. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. Beware of her seductive web. This topic was birthed from the news and the reports of the alleged killers of the rapper Mo3 being arrested. And the events that led up to that point of his death. So I'll touch on that briefly. And then of course, what I do, I'll attack this objectively, and then add a personal story to it and, and see what we can learn from it. Now, allegedly, The day Mo3 died, he had arrived at a young lady's house the night before. Spent the night with that young lady. Now, somewhere in between the time he arrived there at our residence and left, this female's baby daddy, the child's father, was constantly contacting his child who resides at the home. This is all allegedly. Allegedly, the child's father was asking the child, is Mo3 there? And uh, I believe he called two or three times to make sure Mo3 was there. Now reports say this father staked out the house the entire night until the morning, waited till Mo3 left, and follow Mo3. Allegedly, he followed Mo3 into, into a highway, into a freeway. Uh, a pursuit took place. He was following Mo3. I guess Mo3 got wind of it, tried to evade him, crashed out. Mo3 exits the vehicle, begins to try to run away on foot, and the, the gentleman, the father, uh, pursued him with a weapon and uh, put a few bullets in him, and Mo3 died. Now, you know, these are just the reports. I don't know if this is all factual or not, but I'm not even really focusing on that so much. I'm focusing on the nuts and bolts of this thing and the lessons that could be learned as to what to do and what not to do when dealing with women and with dealing when dealing with a certain type of woman. I don't know that young lady. I don't know her history, but this could be any woman or a certain type of woman with a certain type of situation. Now, what I mean by that is this young lady who Mo3 visited and spent the night with, had relations with, obviously didn't have her stuff together, didn't have her situation together with her child's father. Boundaries uh, had not been established or accepted. And she probably underestimated this, uh, her child's father ang anger, her, his anger, his, his bitterness, his jealousy. She underestimated it. Now, I doubt that she knew uh, it would get to this point. Or possibly she did know it would get to this point. We don't know, right? But for the men, um, when you're dealing with a woman with children, you got to ask questions and you got to pay attention to what's not being said. You want to make sure before you start 
hanging out at her place. Definitely before you start spending the night at her place. That her situation with the kid's father is, is done and accepted. There are no soul ties. There are no emotional ties. And there is uh, no threat of him attacking you or having any kind of jealous, jealousy or bitterness towards you because you're now sleeping with his child's mother. You want to make sure that's, that's understood, that there's no ties. Uh, you also want to be leery about even going to someone's house with small kids. You know, I don't know how long Mo3 and this young lady have been seeing each other, but just a side note, be leery about women who will bring you in their home around their children. You know, that's not cool. It's never been cool. Um, some kind of rapport has to be established. Some kind of trust has to be built. And you got to know who this person is before you just bring them around your children, especially to spend the night. Right? Um, yeah, most women are not going to tell you the severity of the tension between she and her child's father. They're not going to tell you that because it's going to run you off, especially if she likes you. She fears it may run you off. She doesn't want that. So they'll tell you bits and pieces, but they really won't tell you everything, how deeply infatuated or in love or in lust this man is with her. The other things he's done, the stalking tactics, the abuse tactics, everything he's done prior to you. Sometimes they won't tell you all that. They won't tell you that it is possible that he could pop up over here at any time, unannounced. Most women, not all, most women would not tell you that because they want what they want. <clears throat> they want you. They like you. They don't want to run you off. So you can't trust what a woman says. Never, never trust what a woman says. Only trust what a woman does. And I don't care what woman it is. I don't care my wife, my daughter, my mom, my sisters. It doesn't matter. Only trust what a woman does. Never trust what she says. Now, you can disagree. Hey, go down that path at your, at your own risk. I know firsthand that that can lead you into some dangerous waters just going off what a woman says. Many, many men have died or gotten severely hurt going off what a woman says uh, and not just really paying attention <clears throat> and trusting what she does. You gotta, you gotta trust her actions over her words. Now, these two men, well, it, it came out that two men were involved, allegedly. <clears throat> they were arrested. And the other side of this is, here you got a man, the child's father, uh, who allegedly did this, uh, killed Mo3, and his life may be over. The life as he as he's been used to, a free life, a non caged life, might be over. Because of what? Because of jealousy, bitterness. You know, uh, if you're not doing anything with your life, if you're not being creative and really capitalizing off your God given talents and gifts. 
it can really bother you. I can see how it can bother a man when his child's mother gets with a local rap star, but definitely a budding national, rec nationally recognized rap star. Mo3 was on his way, but he definitely had a big name in Texas and down south. Uh, but he was on his way to uh, reaching national acclaim. He was on his way, very talented brother. So if you still got a soul tie, an emotional tie to a woman, to your, ch your child's mother, and you're not really doing anything productive, creative with your life, and she gets with someone who is really doing this thing, yeah, that, that can really eat at you. On top of that, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she was throwing it in his face. You know, that's, that's not far-reaching. Um, some women do that. They want to uh, tell you what, you know, who they're with now, what their man is doing. You know, I've never run into that, but I've heard stories. So that possibly could have added fuel to the fire. That's not her fault, though. If a man is responsible for his own actions. Now, it looks like he had an accomplice, allegedly. That man has thrown his life away. So, you got two men that possibly could be going to the penitentiary for a very long time. And you got one man who's dead. You know, his life ended at the age of 28. That's a young man. And you got a child without a father. And guess what? This woman is still living. She's still living. So, you know, this channel is called A Toast to the Man. I talk to men. I don't talk to men. I talk with men. Uh, I talk about men. And uh, when I say men, I'm included in that. Some of these, these things I'm telling you I'm talking to myself also. So I blame the men. Um, Mo3 should have been moving wiser and more careful. And uh, the alleged murderer should have been uh, in more control of his life more control of his thoughts, his feelings, his emotions. I guarantee you, if this man was doing something productive with his life and was benefiting from that productivity, however, however way he wants to be benefited, no way is he tripping on his child's mother dating anyone even low three, no way is he tripping because uh, he's doing his thing. He feels good about himself. The future is bright for him. But when you're not doing anything, you have nothing to lose. You're willing to throw it, throw it away. You're willing to throw your life away easily because there's nothing keeping you here. You know, so... I blame the men, and uh, we got to move differently, fellas. We got to move differently, even with me, man. My younger days, my younger dating days. If I was conversing or or say, well, say dating a certain type of female that lived in a certain neighborhood in Fort Worth, I wouldn't go to Fort Worth. If she lived in a certain neighborhood, I wouldn't go. Uh, I'm from Dallas. I know Dallas. <clears throat> I don't know Fort Worth like that. So we got to meet somewhere neutral or, you know, depending on the situation, you can come to me, come to my place, or we got to meet somewhere neutral. But I'm not going to your place. I'm definitely not spending the night. Uh, that's just that's just how I, ro I rock back then, you know. That's my thought process. Uh, no way was I going out to Fort Worth, you know. Just <clears throat> how I was raised, how we grew up thinking, man. It might be a setup, 
you know, I just don't know what's going on. You know, I, I don't know. She got a, a boyfriend. She, she might be lying to me. She got a bitter ex. So even as a young man, I never really took those chances. Now, I possibly could have been Mo3. Now, I wasn't a rap star. I had no aspirations of being a rapper. But i tell you a quick story. Um, back, I was like 17. Met this young lady. She was like 21, 22. She had her own place. I'm staying with my mom at the time. I'm still in high school. I'm a senior. She had her own place, had a roommate. Now, she's a woman. Now, this is why I say you have to be careful or be aware of a woman's seductive web. Man, this woman oozed, oozed seduction. But it wasn't over the top. It was powerful, but uh, subtle and classy. And she was just very feminine and uh, very nurturing and catering. Now, this wasn't my woman. I wasn't her man. And uh, I'm sure she had other visitors. Uh, we never discussed that never came up, but I like, I just like being around this woman. Uh, man, when I tell you her femininity will put you in a trance and it will have you craving to be around her every day. Now, the, the, the sex was the bomb. She was very submissive. Uh, man, it was a bomb. But aside from that, just her personality outside the bedroom was just femininity on 10. And then she was just cool. And I'm not talking about the homegirl cool you know, with a hint of masculinity. No, nah, man, she was totally feminine. And uh, just laid back and cool, just very cool. And I'm telling you, it will put you in a trance. I knew the power of it when, uh, that's how cool she was, man. One time I, I said, hey, I'm going to come through with my boys. And, you know, maybe one of my boys would want to get with her roommate. Because her roommate never had visitors. They were like total opposites, right? And man, I brought my boys over. Now, two of, the, two of these guys were like my boys. I spoke on them in the last video. We're 17 at the time, or around 17. These guys a year or two older than me. We've been knowing each other since second grade. Now, the third, the other guy, there's four of us. Now, the other guy was the cousin of one of my boys. So we all go over there, kick it, smoke, drink, we're just chilling. The roommate comes out of her room, everybody's chilling, having fun. Now, the cousin of my boy, I've been knowing him for a while too. I mean, this guy, man, we've never had any issues. We've always been cool. Uh, no issues at all. But man, I'm telling you, when I brought him around her, man, this dude turned into a different guy. Uh, he started, you know how someone just sends subtle shots at you, subtle hating shots, sarcasm. He went out of his way to impress her, to try to hate on me and down me, to impress her, but he didn't just do it openly. It was just subtle shots. And uh, I'm looking at his cousin, my boy, his cousin, I'm looking like, hey, man, what, what, like, what's going on, man? What's, what's up with your kinfolk? But she totally took this guy out of his natural character. 
uh, he wanted her. Like, he wanted her, and he was willing to break principles and code to have her. And uh, she was mesmerizing, though, man. She was. She was mesmerizing, and it was addictive. Her energy was addictive. And so I say all that to say I didn't ask many questions about her situation. I knew she had a child. But anytime I would come over, uh, the child would be with her mom outside the home or uh, the father's mom. So, you know, we, we never really, you know, talked in depth about anything like that. So one day, and this, this was my core, my thing. <laughs> one day, one night. Me and my boys, those same boys, we're going to a house party. Now, we go to this house party. I drive. Everybody pals into my vehicle. When we get there, as soon as we get out the car, I get a page from her to come through. Hey, man, when I say she was mesmerizing, like, the look, her look, everything, man. The sex, her personality, her energy, her vibe, everything. So when she pages, man, I everything drops. I'm going to see her. <laughs> so my boys go inside the party. I go into the party, and I'm like telling myself, "Hey, man, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just duck off and go to her place because her place was like three blocks away from the party." I'm going to go to her place, do my thing, and then I'm going to head back to the party. Now I'm telling myself, I'm not going to tell my boys because, man, they want to go. They want to come over, too. And it ain't that type of deal tonight. Or we sitting around drinking and smoking. And I'm going over here to handle some business. So I don't even tell them I'm leaving. I just leave, right? I'm the ride. I drove. So I leave, go to her place. We're doing our thing. About 15 minutes in, I hear a bang on the door, on her front door. We're in the back room. Just banging, banging. I'm like, damn, who, who was that? And she's like, I think that's my baby daddy, my child's father. I'm like, oh, man. So he's banging. He's yelling. So I, mean, I don't know if he had intuition or he saw me go in there. He was staking out. I'm not sure. But he knew someone was in there. He wasn't giving up. Man, dude was just banging and banging and banging. I mean, man, this went on and on. So my thing is, man, I'm asking her. Hey, your roommate is not going to let him in, right? And she's like, no, no, she wouldn't do that. Dude is banging and banging on the door. Bro, five minutes later, I hear the door open. The roommate let this guy in. So I can hear him walking towards the room through the hall. I get up, put on my boxers, man, and start trying to get on my clothes. He busts through the door with a gun in his hand. Man, I look in his eyes. I was just like, man, I thought I was gonna I thought I was a goner. Man, if you if you can see the look in his eyes, I just knew this is the end. So he got the pistol in his hand. And the first thing that came to my mind came out of my mouth. And I said, bro, give me a pass. She told me she was single. Man, <laughs> this dude cocked the pistol and tried to shoot. And I could tell it locked up, it jammed. 
And as soon as it, I saw it, Janet go off, I took off, hit him with the elbow so I could just get some distance. And then I, I shot out. I made it to the front door. And the whole time I'm running to the front door, I'm like, man, don't shoot me in the back of the head. Don't shoot me in the back of the head. I'll make it out. Now, with this vehicle I had at the time, man, this thing was a hoopty. Sometimes it would start up right away. Sometimes it wouldn't. I'm fumbling with the keys. I'm thinking, man, please, please, let this not be the day you tripping. Car starts right up. I burn rub out. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I get back to the park. Man, my boys are outside of the house. I'm like, man, where, where you been? You know, just this, you know. I'm like, man, you just gonna leave us? That was my karma, right? So I'm like, I'm telling them what went down. And uh, they like, what? I was like, yeah, man. Dude tried to shoot me. And uh, my boy, one of my boys was like, but well, damn, man. <clears throat> they had the gauge, the 12 gauge in the back. When I got in, I put the 12 gauge in the back. So the whole time I got the 12 gauge in the back seat. I don't even know. But that doesn't even matter anyway because I didn't have it on me. So uh, it's crazy, man. So your boy, SD, <laughs> possibly could not have been here right now talking to you if that gun didn't jam. Listen, I can blame that man. I could blame her. But that's my fault. That's my fault. I didn't ask any questions, right? I'm just enjoying myself, having a good time. And I'm hypnotized by her energy. A lot of sex, her energy, her vibe. So I'm not even thinking, you know. I'm just floating, not even thinking. And uh, that was the last, only the last time I've ever been in a situation like that. From that day forward, I asked questions. Uh, I listened, I listened to what was said, what was not being said. And uh, if I was gonna be around their child, <clears throat> we had to be in a relationship for me to be around your child, or I don't want to be around your child. Now, if I'm going to be around your child and the father is in their life, I want to meet the father. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what's really going on. I could tell if I shake this man's hand, I look him in his eyes, if this guy has really moved on. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's the bottom line. So, you know, Mo3, man, he should have not been there. And, fellas, if you don't want her at your place, you know, depending on what kind of woman it is, you got different levels, right? You got you to gotta get a room or something, man. Uh, but you can't get caught slipping like that. Uh, I almost did. Well, actually, I did get caught slipping, but I dodged a bullet, so to speak. And uh could have been ugly. I could possibly not be here today. So, uh, yeah, don't get caught up in the energy, the vibe, uh, the look, the sex of a woman to the point where you're not thinking rationally and you're not paying attention and you're slipping. You know, you got to stay on point. Rule with your head up here, not your head down there. And you will avoid a lot of uh, drama, to say the least. So, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Peace.